my channel Dazzling Stepping Stone. Now we are going to discuss about blood pressure measurement. Let us start with pressure, types of blood pressure and types of blood pressure measurement. So first we should know what is pressure. Pressure is defined as force per unit area. So the formula for pressure is P equal to F by A. So P means pressure, F is force, A represents area. There are two types of pressure. Once again see this formula P equal to F by A. So also we can write F equal to P into A. Right? So under pressure if force is constant then the pressure is called as hydrostatic pressure. Right? So under pressure if force is fixed it's not changing. Okay? Then it is called a static pressure. Suppose under pressure if force is varying then the pressure is called as hydrodynamic pressure. Let us see the definition. So hydrostatic pressure means if the force in the system under pressure is not varied then the pressure is known as hydrostatic pressure. Next one is hydrodynamic pressure. If the force in the system under pressure is varied then the pressure is known as hydrodynamic pressure. So these are the general types of pressure. Let us move to the blood pressure types. There are two types of blood pressure. First one is systolic blood pressure. So, it's a maximum pressure which is exerts on the arteries and blood vessels. So, the maximum pressure value is 90 to 120 millimeters in mercury. So, it is a maximum press pressure which is applied to the arteries. The next type of pressure is diastolic pressure. It is a minimum pressure or low pressure. So, this is the pressure which is coming on the walls of arteries. So, the range of diastolic blood pressure is 60 to 80 millimeters in mercury. Okay, so we have discussed common types of pressure and two types of blood pressure. Systolic pressure and diastolic blood pressure. Just note on these values. See, the highest pressure is called as systolic blood pressure. Ranges from 90 to 120. If it is minimum pressure, that is called as diastolic blood pressure. The value is varying from 60 to 80 millimeters in mercury. Now let us move to the types of methods used in blood pressure measurement. There are two methods. One is indirect method. Second one is direct method. So by using spigmo manometer, we can measure the pressure, blood pressure rate. So that is called as indirect method. Let us move to indirect method. So this indirect method is also called as ascultator method. Also it is called as oscillometric method. So based on the sound, we are measuring the blood pressure. See this diagram. See this. Here we are having the rubber bladder. So, it is called as cuff. Also, we are having squeeze ball pump. Also, we are having a wall. Okay. So, squeeze ball pump means it is used for giving press. Right. So, this pigmo manometer is used to measure the blood pressure. This is called as pigmo manometer. So, we are measuring the blood pressure indirectly. So, it is called as an indirect method. So, this pigmo manometer which is consisting of rubber bladder. So, which consists of... Uh, Cuff, cuff we can uh, call it as. So cuff, C-U-F-F. -F, okay. Also rubber squeeze which is having a ball pump and the wall. The pressure is measured using the spigmo manometer which is having a mercury column for measuring the value. See this figure. So this cuff is wrapped between the midway of elbow and shoulder. See this figure. So from this we can get the clear idea about the concept. Here we are wrapping the cuff around the between the elbow and the shoulder and we are having the squeeze ball pump also we are keeping the stethoscope on the arteries then we are having a mercury column so at the initial stage uh, when the cuff is fixed on the surface the cuff pressure is increasing and is a maximum pressure is uh, getting in the mercury column so now the doctor will try to reduce the pressure level there will be a screw in that and the doctor can change the screw and he will try to reduce the pressure value. Cuff pressure value will be reducing from this place and it is uh, gradually reducing. And when it reaches this place, that uh, pressure is called a systolic pressure. Already we have discussed the maximum pressure is called as systolic pressure and the minimum pressure is called as diastolic pressure. Right? So, do you, by using the sound, we can measure the pressure we have discussed. That sound is called as Corroded cuff sound. See, this is the sound waveform. So, that is called as corroded cuff sound. Okay. 
So at first it is at the highest level. The cough pressure is very very high and it is gradually reducing. When the cough pressure which is uh, lesser than the systolic pressure value that time a small crashing sound and a snapping sound will be heard by the doctor through this stethoscope. Right? So that sound will be hearing that is called a scarot cuff sound. When this cough pressure which is reaching this point that is diastolic pressure the sound will be vanished. Okay. So this is called as diastolic pressure. Now see, see this diagram second diagram. I already told that there will be a maximum pressure at the initial stage. Okay. Now it is gradually de decreasing and it reaches the point called a systolic pressure. What is the maximum pressure value? 120. Right. After that, we are reducing this uh, pressure and the carot cuff sound we are hearing that is called as some oscillation or some disturbance. So, this is uh, representing the carot cuff sound. See this? So, between the systolic and diastolic pressure, we are having the waveform. Right? So, when it reaches the diastolic pressure, definitely the carot cuff sound will be vanished. Right? So, the first point is the cuff is wrapped around the patient arm. Next point, we are fixing the stethoscope on the artery. Now, while keeping this uh, cuff, the pressure will, value will be increasing at a greater point so that the blood will be stopped, blood flow will be stopped in the blood vessel. So, the doctor is reducing the pressure and he is getting a crashing sound when it reaches the systolic pressure value. When it is getting low, when comparing the systolic pressure, the cuff pressure, when it is going to be low, that time the sound will be getting, that sound is called as scarot cuff sound. When it reaches this minimum position, minimum pressure value, that is diastolic pressure, then the sound value will be vanished. This scarot cuff sound will be vanished, right? So that is called as muffling. Later we will discuss. So from that you can understand. So we are based on the root cuff sound, we are measuring the blood pressure. Already told that. The systolic pressure value is 120 millimeters in mercury and the diastolic pressure is uh, noted as 80 millimeters in mercury. So, these are the values for normal person. So, the current cuff sound will be disappeared at some point. When it reaches the diastolic pressure value, the sound will be disappear. That is known as muffling. Okay. So, this measurement can be possible with the help of the sound. So, it is called as auscultation in the method. So, this indirect method is also called as auscultation method. Understand? What are the advantages of this method? So, it's a very simple method. There is no pain and if there is no hazardous surgical procedure involved in this. It is the very easiest method for measuring the blood pressure. But the main drawback is it may give some error. The error may be created due to the clinician and because the operator or the doctor may read the value wrongly, Okay, because based on the current cuff sound only, the pressure value can be noted, right? So, that there may be any error in the measurement. So, that uh, this indirect method we are uh, not using mostly and we are moving to direct method. So, for accurate blood pressure reading, we are moving to direct method and therefore, measuring the reading in the deepest region, this indirect method is not useful. So, that we are moving to direct method. But because in indirect method, we are keeping this uh, cuff at the between elbow and shoulder. And we are keeping this stethoscope on the arteries. Right. So, uh, it is very simple method. But sometimes the, there is a possibility of error. Okay. Now, if you want to measure the blood pressure in the deepest region, we are moving to direct method. Here we are using probes. The first method is catheter tip probe. Here we are having the tip. So at the tip of the probe, we are having the sensor. The sensor will measure the blood pressure. Okay. Now the second method is fluid filled catheter type. So here we are having the word fluid. So this catheter system which is filled with fluid. And by using this, we can measure the blood pressure. Here we are having a pressure transducer. The pressure value will be converted into electrical signal and we can measure that. Let us discuss about this fluid filled catheter type deeply. See, this is the fluid filled catheter type method. See this, here we are having pressure transducer and we are having the fluid filled catheter. 
and we are having pressure monitor. Correct? Now we are fixing this uh, catheter into the tissue. Right? In, into the internal organ we are fixing this catheter tip. And before going to measure, first we have to flush out uh, this uh, tube. Because uh, if you are using uh, any sterile saline, then it will be completely flush out. So that we can avoid the blood vessel from clotting. Right? So, the first point is fluid filled system should be completely flushed out. In the second point, we can use sterile saline for flushing out. Now, if you are using this flushing mechanism, definitely this blood clotting can be avoided. Right? So, uh, by using this catheter, we can measure this pressure and this transducer will convert the pressure into electrical signal and we can monitor the pressure in this display. So based on this method, we can measure both systolic pressure and diastolic pressure. This is the circuit of this measurement. First, you see this. This is called as strain cage pressure transducer. So, this transducer will convert the measured pressure value into electrical signal. So, this signal will be amplified by the amplifier. Now, at this place, we are having output. Right? If the signal is having positive peak, then this circuit will function. Now, this diode D3 will be on and this capacitor will be charging and this resistor which is uh, this RC combination actually used for giving stable display in the meter. Here we are having meter for measuring the systolic pressure value. Right. So this meter will display the systolic pressure value. And suppose if the peak is negative now it will come to this uh, circuit and to measure the diastolic pressure here we are having the meter called as M2. That is diastolic indicator. Now here the capacitor will be start charging at this place. We can get peak to peak pulse value we can obtain. And the diode D2 will be on condition. Correct. And this RC component is used for giving stable display. And we can measure the diastolic pressure value in this meter M2. Understand. So by using this two indicator we can measure both systolic pressure and diastolic pressure. So, systolic is the maximum pressure value and diastolic is the minimum pressure value. Let us discuss all the points once again. So, here we are using catheter tip row. We are inserting and here also we are using a pressure transducer. Right? And this transducer will convert the measured pressure into electrical signal and it will be amplified. It will, it will be displayed in the monitor. There are two indicators available. First one is systolic display and second one is diastolic display. Already told that. So that uh, we can measure the uh, systolic pressure value. And when the positive pulse is going to the circuit, diode will be on and capacitor will be charging to the peak value. And this RC combination is used for stable display. Right. Similarly, we can measure the diastolic pressure value. Here also the charge will be the capacitor will be charging and the diode will be on and we can measure the peak to peak value of the pressure pulse. Right. So from this peak to peak value of pressure pulse and systolic uh, pressure value, we can measure the diastolic pressure. See, already I told that this diode will be on so that the C2 is charged up to peak to peak pulse value and we can measure the pressure that is diastolic pressure in M2. Right. The formula for measuring the diastolic pressure is M2 means diastolic pressure that is equal to peak systolic value minus peak to peak value of pressure pulse. Right. So, if you are subtracting both, we can get the diastolic pressure. I hope that you have understand the concept. Thank you for watching this video.